Hi everyone, Daniel from Flogia. So a few weeks ago, I bought the Honeywell air quality monitor, and I figured that because Honeywell has a background doing commercial sensors, their home version would probably be pretty good as well. It has about six different sensors on it, including PM 2.5, that's particulate matter at 2.5 microns, uh, formaldehyde, temp and humidity, carbon dioxide, and then total volatile organic compounds, and it takes a composite of those and scores them into what they call an IQ score, which should be representative of your overall air quality. So the hardware itself is good, good build quality, seems like a solid little device, and of course what interested me is the fact that it had a Wi-Fi connection and would be able to stream out those readings so that I could consume those from, say, a mobile app. Now, when I first started using this app, it was terrible to launch, it frequently wouldn't get data, and I think it was due to timeouts. All of that does seem to have been fixed, but it doesn't keep any local cache of data, and if the data goes out of scope, then they don't retain anything beyond a certain point in time. So I was interested to understand how I could interface with this API to be able to keep a cache of my data and then report on it as I see fit. So I'm going to show you how to use Fiddler. So that first of all, you can intercept requests made by apps on your computer, and then how you can configure Fiddler as a router so that even the requests going from your mobile apps on your phone will get routed through it so that you can inspect them. Then once we've had a look at that, we'll be able to see what the Honeywell API is, where it's located, how we authenticate, and we'll be able to replicate that integration outside of the mobile app, which gives us access to our data. So first of all, go to Telerik.com and download Fiddler, or alternatively, just Google it. It'll definitely be the first search result there. Once you've launched the app, this is what it's going to look like. And in this window on the left-hand side, it's going to show you all the sessions that it's been able to intercept. You need to make sure that capture traffic is enabled from the file menu, or otherwise press F12. And once you've done that, you'll see this capturing icon in the bottom left-hand corner telling you that it is capturing traffic. Now, from here on out, any time you access a web page, so for example, I'm just going to go to google.com, you'll see the page load up, and in the background, it's shown as a log of all of the endpoints that Chrome has connected to. Now, that's great, but I actually can't see the traffic yet, and that's because this traffic is encrypted, and right now, all I'm able to see is the decrypted traffic. So the next thing that we need to do is have Fiddler act as a kind of proxy where it can get in the middle through a root certificate and offload the encrypted request from the app on my machine to Fiddler and then Fiddler will re-encrypt to the destination and then it'll do the reverse in the reverse direction. So to enable that, go to Tools, Options, click on the HTTPS tab and then click on Capture HTTPS Connect and then also click on Decrypt HTTPS Traffic. Then it's probably going to give you a whole bunch of prompts about getting a root cert installed and if you need to just double check you can run through that process again and go to Actions and then click Trust Root Certificate. So what this will do is give you some very severe prompts and uh, eventually it will give you an elevation prompt into Windows, which will cause the root certificate to be installed. So now Fiddler is going to be able to intercept our encrypted traffic as well. If I go into a browser now and type some search term in like test, and then we have a look at Fiddler, now we can see all of the different requests that have been made, in this case by Google.com. But if I have a look at them and go to the Inspectors tab, I can have a look at the request, I can even go to the raw view over here, showing me the, the raw request that was sent by the browser. And then I can also look at the raw response. And this is the kind of information that we want to be able to see to understand this API. So that sorts us out with all of the traffic on our machine. We're able to easily see it. But what we actually want is to be able to intercept traffic coming from mobile apps on our phone. So let me show you how to interact with that. So go to Fiddler, click on Tools, Options, click the Connections tab, tick Allow Remote Computers to Connect, It'll give me a dialog for that. And then tick Act as System Proxy on Startup. It will then set up a proxy server for us on port 8888. And I just need to know what the IP address of my machine is on the network so that my phone on the same network, the same Wi-Fi network in this case, is able to connect to this proxy server. So to do that, you go to Command Prompt and go into an IP config. In my case, my IP address is 192.168.0.108. So that's the IP and the port that I need to open on my phone. So here, I've navigated to an HTTP site. Note that it's not HTTPS, and that's brought me to the Fiddler Echo service. From here, there's a link to install the Fiddler root certificate. So tap that link, click on Allow, and then go Close. Then you can go to your General tab, scroll down right to the bottom, and tap the Profile button. Inside Profile, you'll now see the certificate that just got downloaded. Tap on that. Tap on Install, put in your passcode, tap Install again, 
and tap install. Now we're ready to configure our Wi-Fi connection to connect over proxy server. So go back to your settings, go into Wi-Fi, click the info tab next to the Wi-Fi. Right at the bottom, go to configure proxy, take that to manual and put in the IP address of your computer. And then set the port to 8888. Now finally, you need to navigate to general, about, certificate trust settings, and then flip the toggle on do not trust Fiddler root, the cert that we've just installed. From here on out, Fiddler on my machine is going to be able to intercept all of the traffic that's happening on my phone. So I'm going to relaunch the app, and now we can see all of the calls that the app is making as it launches. At this point, we've got the data, so I'll stop capturing and leave Fiddler open. So the first thing that you want to do is get rid of all of the data that isn't relevant. Specifically in this case, I wasn't interested in anything except the calls to the Honeywell endpoint. Even after I'd done that, I found that there were a number of duplicated requests for the Honeywell app. Some of them are calling every few seconds, some of them are succeeding, some of them are failing, but they're not actually relevant to my use case. Eventually, I was able to whittle down the calls to three separate calls that need to be made as a bare minimum to obtain the report data via API. Here's what they look like. So first of all, there's a call to slash user. You can see that at the end of the URL. And this is the authentication process. So over here, we're going to pass in the mobile number, the password, an ID for the phone, and some other bits of information. And the important thing back here is not so much the phone ID that's coming back as the set cookie response header. And what that is doing is telling the browser or the app that next time a request is made, we should use that cookie because that will authenticate us as that user. So the next request would be to obtain a list of devices. Now, I only have one, but this is still a required step. So using that cookie, you can see this time around my mobile app used that session that was supplied from the previous call and then was able to obtain a list of all of the devices. Specifically, this is the device ID for the device that I have, and here's the serial, which seems to look like the same thing. Then the third call is against that device, so it's a slash device endpoint. Again, you can see that cookie being provided as a request. And this time around, we're getting raw data back. If I look at this in the JSON view, this is a JSON document representing all of the metering information that's been recorded for a particular timestamp. And you'll notice there's a timestamp field against each of these, and this probably correlates to data acquired perhaps once per minute. So this is where we want to get. Now what we'll do is build a Flowgear workflow that reuses these API calls so that we can store this information or present it as we see fit. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a new workflow, and we'll start with a web request, which will obtain a session for us. Go to add, add in the web request node, and then we need to put in the URL and the method. If you go into Fiddler, you'll notice the URL at the top over here. First of all, it's a post method. You can see that on line one. And then here's the URL. It ends with slash user. So we'll go and paste that into the URL property. Under method, we'll set this to post. And then we'll be able to paste in the payload of the authentication information. Now, that includes things like the language and so on, but it also includes a username, a password, and a phone UUID. I'm just going to copy that information directly out of the payload that we have here. And I'll put it straight into the post body property. I've chosen to hard code all of that in. Of course, if you wanted to, you could add custom properties and parameterize out fields like the username and the password. Now, the next thing that you must do is create a connection. There's actually a few reasons for this. So focus the connection property, click on plus, and then click on edit to be able to create a new connection. I want to run this request through a drop point, not from our cloud environment. Reason for this is basically because it looks like Honeywell has blocked most Azure IP ranges, so you won't be able to make that request from Azure, which is where our cloud runs. The second thing that you want to do is toggle return HTTP failure responses. If something does fail, you want to be able to deal with that in the browser. And the third thing is that this is using cookie-based authorization, and so to have Flowgear honor that through the web request node, you need to provide a session key. Now, this is just some piece of text. I'm just going to use the text Honeywell, but this means that when I run subsequent web requests, steps, it's going to be able to use the same session that we set up in the earlier steps. So once you've done that, hit Save Connection, and then go back to the first tab. So we now have that invoke good to go, and I'll connect up an execution flow and run this stage of the workflow. 
Over on the right hand side, I can see that we have a status code of 200. In other words, it was successful. I have a response body giving me the phone ID. I don't actually care a whole lot about that. But in the response headers, I can see that the session has been established via the set cookie response header. And because we set that session up in the connection, all subsequent web requests using this connection in this workflow are going to use that session. So our authorization is just handled for us. Next up, what we want to do is enumerate the list of devices. So I'll go and add a second web request and then set the same Honeywell connection that we just created. Now in this case, if you look at Fiddler, this is the slash user slash device slash list operation. It's over here. It doesn't have any parameters on it and it's a get request. So really easy to plug that one in, pop in the URL, connect up an execution flow and let's see those two stages run. Now that that's completed, over on the right hand side, again, we're getting status code 200 back, signaling that this was a success. And importantly, here's the device ID, which we're going to be using on the last call that we make when we actually retrieve this data out. So now we want to obtain the raw data, and we've got an authenticated session, and we've got the ID of the device to do that against. So go ahead and add a third web request to the design. Execution flow over here. Back in Fiddler, we can see the endpoint is slash user slash device. It's a post request. I'm just going to copy that whole thing, and we'll paste that into the URL. So there's the URL, and I'll show you what that looks like. So that's the full URL. Starts with obviously HTTPS, ends with slash user slash device. And then under method, we need to set that to post. And then we need to, need to put some parameters into the post data property as well. So I'll go and open that up. And over here, you can see what that payload looks like. So I'm just going to paste that straight in. Uh, we'll just format it for good measure. And these are the props that you would want to set. And notice one thing, though, that we, we could do here is we've got a device ID that is currently hard-coded. But if you wanted to build a reusable workflow, what we should be doing is getting the device ID from the previous stage and injecting it into this. So over here, what I can do is create a property called device ID. Add that as a custom property over here. Tell Flowgear that we need JSON value escaping on that. And then from the response body, plug into the device ID and drill into that property. And there's our device ID that we need to plug into there. So that's going to dynamically inject the device ID for us. And the last thing we should do is set the connection to that Honeywell connection that we set up earlier. So we're now ready to run that. And let's see what it does. I'll look at the last activity log. Again, it's showing us that we have a 200 status response. And this time around, if I drill into response body, I can see all of that data sitting there for me now. So I now have all of the data coming back over the date range that we've specified. There's my total volatile organic compounds, formaldehyde, PM2.5, carbon dioxide temperature, the composite IQ, humidity, and then obviously the device ID and the timestamp, which this is actually keyed on. I'm going to give you a simple example of how we would now take that data and render it into Excel, and then we'll be able to just build a quick chart with it. We're going to use Quick Map to manipulate this data. So I'll add that to the canvas. Our source mapping is going to be taken from the response body, and then we're going to manually provide an example of how we want that data to actually get translated. Uh, Pre-prepared a sample for that. Now if I go into the Change View option, I can start to map these fields across. And you can see a live preview generating over on the right-hand side showing me how that data is manipulated. And that's now good to send across to the Flowgear Excel connector. So I'll go and add an Excel connector to the design canvas. Over here, I want to tell it to create a spreadsheet rather than to parse it. And I also want to set the formatting option. I don't want to treat all of the fields as text. I need to use what we call smart formatting so that the numeric fields are seen as numbers. And then finally, we'll take that rendered spreadsheet and generate that into an output property, which I'm calling report. That will be a property of type file. And so I'll be able to provide a file extension as well. So let's connect some execution flows along the top of the screen over there. Plug in from report into the table XML property. And then finally, the rendered Excel document will get plugged into the report property. And let's give that a go. So that process completed. And over here is the report that I can download. And you can see all that data being presented now inside an Excel spreadsheet. If you control A that, you can easily generate a chart on this data by going insert, chart, and 2D line. So we've successfully been able to figure out how that API works, reuse a part of it by implementing it in Flowgear, and then getting that raw data accessible to us in Microsoft Excel.